Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This video covers installing CentOS. Uh, we're going to do Stream 9 on VMware Workstation. Uh, I'll show you how to set it up and how to get the installation going. So we're at the CentOS 9 uh, CentOS uh, project web page. We click download. We can go down and select either 10 or 9. In this case, we're doing 9. And I would download the x86, x64 um, version of this. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, one thing that we're doing in our class that um, is a little bit different from your situ potentially from your situation. We're installing on an external uh, hard drive and that's where we're gonna store things. So the first step I want to do is actually, I wanna format this drive and I'm gonna change it to NTFS, wipe out everything that's there so I can just start clean. And I'm gonna put my name as a label just because if it gets lost, then hopefully someone will find it. I click start, a quick format is fine. And any second now it'll be done and then we can start the process. So now I have um, an external drive and we'll take a quick look at it here. Um, it is called Andrew. So there's my external drive that's empty. That's where I'm gonna put things. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I could have, the, there are other ways I can do this. I'm gonna create a folder called uh, VMs and that's where I put all my virtual machines. So now as I build out my uh, cybersecurity testing environment, we're gonna start with CentOS, we'll get to Windows Server in a little bit. Um, I can just have them all in this one place. So first step is I wanna go here and in VMware, I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. Now I've noticed it's a little strange when we uh, point it directly at the ISO file. So I'm gonna just go and do an advanced I'm gonna select um, the hardware compatibility is fine. I'm gonna install the operating system later. I could actually point it at the disk, which I've previously done in this case for testing purposes, but uh, it uses a bad template for it. So just, um, we're gonna do it this way. Now I'm gonna say Linux and because we're doing stream nine, I'm gonna call it Red Hat Inter Enterprise Linux nine. Now, what happens if we do, um, straight from the disk is it picks it up as CentOS 5 or earlier. And you know, it's possible we can make that work, but I think this is just gonna be a little bit cleaner for us. So I'll go next and instead of calling it the virtual machine Red Hat Enterprise Linux, cause that's the template we're using, I'm gonna name it CentOS. And instead of the location, which is in the documents directory virtual machines on the C drive, I want to put it onto my removable drive and I'm putting it there so that I can, um, here it is, so that I can have this available. Uh, once I'm done using it, I can take this extra drive, I can bring it back and forth between uh, school and home and run the VMs in either location. So this is uh, in VMs and inside of that, I want to create a CentOS. Um, and now I click OK, and there's our location, D, VMs, CentOS. So I click Next on that. Um, it's probably not a big deal. I'm going to do two processors, two cores. That's what I'm simulating. The system has uh, multiple cores, so this should work fine. And I two, two gigabyte of memory is a little light. I could bring it up to four gigabyte, um, and it takes just catching it directly right, directly on the spot. Or I can just go up here and type 4096, which is four gigabyte. Uh, I have plenty of memory on this system, so that's not a problem. Realistically, if I were short on memory, I might go with less. Um, I'm gonna use network address translation for this to uh, be able to download things from uh, the uh, CentOS repository. And, um, Again, this is where we just are following the default settings. They're all fine. Uh, I do want to create a new virtual disk. And because I have plenty of space, I'm going to go with 40. I could have easily done 20. Um, I can do a single file or split into multiple files. By making it NTFS, it's fine with a single file. I'll just leave the default though. And there is my disk file, 40 gig uh, file, and it's not going to use all 40 gig right away. It's only going to allow it to expand. It's gonna be thin provisioned. And 
everything here looks good to me. This is everything I set, four cores available, um, and I click finish. Now, what I've done is I've created, just like in other videos I have, I've created this virtual machine. Now, in order to have it install CentOS, this is basically creating a bare computer, I need to tell it to use the ISO file. And in this case, I'm gonna use the ISO, I'm gonna browse, I wanna use uh, nine, I got rid of the, the 10 download. So there's my nine download. These are, this is server eval we'll look at later on. Ubuntu I used previously, but here we go. Um, I have uh, the ISO file, the CD-ROM drive pointing to the ISO file. So when I start it up now, it will boot from that CD. So I'm launching VMware, it's running. And here I can go in and test uh, the media and install. I'm gonna go directly to install. Um, I'm not worried about the media being corrupt. It's not, it's not likely. Um, I could have verified it a bunch of other ways, but now I am going through the installation has started and it's gonna do a bunch of stuff and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Um, at some point it's gonna start asking me questions and I will go through and uh, make those choices. And here we are starting the installer. Um, again, just sitting here waiting for it. And there we go. We get to uh, selecting the keyboard. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I don't need that there. Um, now, <clears throat> I wanna select English and I don't see my next button on here. So I couldn't see my button. Um, so I, I clicked on the free stretch and it, it made it fit the screen. It just kind of forced a resize on it. So I can click continue now for English. And um, now um, system, I wanna say, I wanna install it to the NVMe drive that I created, the virtual NVMe drive. That's a 40 gigabyte drive. I can select done on that. Now it's telling me root password or user account. I'm not gonna bother with the root password. I'm just gonna create an account. And the account is gonna be Andrew and um, I'm gonna make this user root. Um, my password is going to be cyberclass25 and I will repeat that. And it looks like they match and very strong password, obviously. But if I view that, I can see cyber class 25 and I can see that that's confirmed. I don't need to do anything in advanced. I could specify home directory or anything, but I don't wanna worry about that. I just need to say, hey, yes, let's create the Andrew account. Um, now, uh, it didn't like my selection there. Let's try that again. Uh, automatic configuration done. Now it's happy with that. Now I can select begin installation and it will start the installation. This will take a few minutes, so I'll let this run and wait until we're complete. Okay, and that took a little over eight minutes to get to this point. Uh, so plenty of time to go get a beverage, meditate, or just stare at the screen and wonder if you had the microphone turned on. So it gets to the point of rebooting the system. I will click on reboot system and the system now shuts down um, the shuts down from within VMware. The virtual machine shuts down and restarts. And when that happens, it should boot up relatively quick and it will get to a boot screen. And there we are. So I can click on Andrew. I can type um, cyber class 25. And I am now logged in. Um, you can do the tour if you want. I'm going to skip the tour. First thing I'm going to do is actually go to a terminal. I'm going to just see what my IP address is. It is um, a network address translated 192.168.40.129. So what I'm gonna do now actually is open PuTTY, which I have installed on this computer, and I'm gonna connect to this system. So if I do um, 192.168.40.129, uh, it says it doesn't have the key, I'm going to accept. And now I can log in and I can type Andrew and I can type cyberclass25 
and now I'm logged into the system. So anything I do from here, if I do CD desktop, um, I can create files here. So I'll uh, create a file here called Yoda and I guess they don't display on the desktop. If I go here and I do desktop and I do LS, I see my file called Yoda. So I am now from SSH making changes to the system. I can RM Yoda and I can now do LS and my file is gone. So I'm now able to interact with my from my host to my CentOS system, I can go in and do installations. I can do anything I need to um, and just interact and make this work. I could actually minimize my VMware workstation. I could be working another workstation, any other uh, operating system. So there is CentOS installed on a VMware workstation. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.